Hello? Hi, is this Pamela? Yes. Hi, this is David from AT&T. Yes. It, it seems like um, there's a problem on your phone bill. Like, it looks like you've been making a lot of 1-900 number calls to phone sex lines, and you're currently... I don't believe so. Oh, no, it's definitely... It shows here on the computer, and you're over uh, $3,000 for this month so far. So. Well, you know what? Uh, my husband has been in the hospital for this for some time now. Oh. Uh, a friend has been helping me oh. with my bill. You might want to look um, at that friend really he, closely. I, I'm sorry, but he he's not here today. Uh, he will be in at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Oh, maybe, maybe if you had his number, I could give him a call. Uh, I have his cell. Okay. Uh, oh, wait a second. Um... Are you sure it's not you though making all these these? Phone, I don't. Phone? I hate the phone. I don't make these phone calls. Yeah, but you know the phone sex lines. Eight hundred or nine one eight hundred. No one uh, one nine hundred. I don't know what nine hundred is. Oh, what is well, nine? that's the number that you keep calling to to call I, phone sex. I don't sex. do it. I I don't do it. I don't pick up the phone. I check my messages. That's all. And uh, and then you call phone sex. Who? What? And, and then you call phone sex. One nine hundred numbers. No, I don't know what that is. You don't know what phone sex is? No. Oh, here I'll teach you. All right, <laughs> here we go. Um, what are you wearing right now? <laughs> uh, well, um, a number of things. Are you wearing uh, knickers? Am I wearing sneakers? Uh, uh, yeah, sneakers. Are you wearing sneakers? No. I really like sneakers. No. Oh, what, why are we doing this stupid thing? Oh, I was trying to teach uh, what, you what. What you need to do? Uh, I'm trying either to... I need to have my uh, uh, personal assistant, as he calls himself. Uh, oh, call that's so you. fancy! Like, I'm you just, sorry. Do you just laugh at him? And be like, oh, come on! You're you're my you're my freaking maid. You're not a personal assistant. You're my maid. You're my bitch boy. <laughs> that's what you ought to say to that guy. Personal. I, I'm sorry. I, what? I don't listen, sir. I really, honestly, I'm not a cheat and I'm not a liar. Oh no, and no I, I would never don't suggest know that. what you're talking about. It's, so uh, if you would like this person's cell number, I'll switch the light on. Oh, this is such a bad uh, idea. I, I really don't know what's going on here. I honestly don't know. My husband got out of the hospital on Saturday, and. Um, where, where is he now, uh, then? Is he he's back uh, in the hospital? And he, my assistant, had been paying all the bills. Now, my assistant's name is Bob. Okay. Okay, and here is his cell. Um, oh. 217-75. You, you know, now I can't put the, the show up on Mixler in, in the show reel. What is a show reel? Oh, I don't know. So, um, well, I don't know either. I honestly, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. Well, you're, never, you know what? You're you're so nice that I'm just going to take all these charges off your bill for all these phone sex numbers you've been calling. I have uh, not been calling them. Oh well, no, it's okay. I don't know what nine hundred is. I hate the telephone. It's, I don't know how to use a computer. It's phone sex. Uh, where, where, like, people call you and they ask if you're wearing pumas. Oh, oh, phone sex? Yeah. Oh, is that what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm just not very... Oh, you're uh, doing phone sex? I'm not very good at it. Well, I, well, let's give it a shot. I don't know. That's interesting. Okay, you start. This is phone, phone sex. Yeah, you start. No, listen... Uh, Really, is this a practical joke? Oh no, no, not at all. No, I'm I'm calling from AT and T. Just we noticed all the charges on your bill, and we. we but were... I but I haven't. I have. <laughs> I haven't. Listen, maybe you can call Bob and have gay phone sex. Oh yes. Yeah. Well, you, you hey, he, that's good. You think that's good. You think he will? Um, well, that's interesting. That's a new experience for me. Phone sex. Yeah. Well, I hope it was good for you. So what you know, are you whole, wearing? The whole sneaker thing. I'm not what wearing. What are you wearing? I'm not wearing any sneakers. 
Uh, I'm wearing a, a no. What do, you, do you have a thing for sneakers? Yeah, mostly pumas. <laughs> I'm wearing an Obey the Cactus T-shirt right now, and nothing else. <laughs> oh. It's an How oversized T-shirt. How old are you? I'm 41. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm old enough to be your mother. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> Some people like that, I hear. Am I making your, your knickers moist? No. Oh, t- darn it. No, uh, no, not at all. But you're making me laugh a lot. I, <laughs> find, I think this is very funny. Well, that's good. Uh, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, okay, say well, what? I said I'm glad to hear it. Okay, I'm, I'm going to type, I'm going to remove all of these charges from your bill. Because it doesn't sound like... I mean, obviously, you don't know how to have phone sex. You try. No, I obviously don't. Why don't you wait till my husband gets home from the AA meeting, and, and then you guys can do it. Okay. Well, what time is this <laughs> AA, is AA meeting over? <laughs> okay. Well, think, thanks. And listen, is that 900 thing... Uh, is that a, a, a code for... Oh. Someone wanting to have phone sex? No, no, it's a phone number, like one nine zero zero. I don't believe it. No, 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 no. Oh, no. you don't believe that part? Okay. No, no, I don't believe. It. No, yeah, I wouldn't. Anyway, either. anyway, what an interesting way to spend a Monday afternoon. And uh, do you believe? Do you really believe that I'm old enough to be your mother? Oh, yeah, I totally believe that. You sound really old. I do. Uh huh. Oh, I'm going to hang up on you now. Good, hang up. See if I care. <laughs> broadband 2 is blinking red. Oh, Broadband 2, that's that's the Nigerian scammer light. Well, what the heck's going on? I don't know. Do you have a hammer? Do you have a hammer? I love you. Uh-oh, you're a sick bastard, Dave. Have a good day. I love you. Whoa! Right there. Damn. It was a Pikachu, all right? It don't matter for Pikachu. You take that back. You're not taking back nothing. You don't call me an EMF. No, I said motherfucker. Fuck you and your dumb pants, okay? Thanks, Carter Pillar, for that intro song. Hey, everyone, this is the Snowplow Show. I'm your host, Brad, and it's October 7th, 2019. This is episode 585, I think, and it's brought to you by Crooked Alligator, Todd L., Anagol009, Xander Fett, and The Least Creative. Thanks, everybody, for supporting the show, including the people who've signed up recently, like Grot Clot and Economy Lunch and Distorted View. Holy shit, Distorted View supporting the show? That's crazy. I listen to every show he does, and you should too. Distortedview.com, everyone. That's a very important podcast to listen to. Did you know it's just 10 days until the Portland Retro Gaming Expo? I'm going to be there. This isn't like an official meetup, really. It's just that I'm going to this dumb gaming expo thing up in Portland. And if you go there, maybe you'll see me around. I'll be wearing a cactus shirt or something. I'm sure I'll tweet about where I am if you want to come and say hello. But there's going to be a few other people there, like King Richard. And I don't know if I'm allowed to say who else is going to be there. I plan to only be there on Saturday. That's the only day I bought a ticket for. So if you're not doing anything on Saturday, October 19th, and you happen to be around Portland, that's happening. I don't think I have any other announcements, so let's do show things. Right after this quick song, which is also by Carter Pillar. Why don't you come clean with me who you really are? Fun. And then we'll be... tell you if we want to come to the theater with you. What the heck? That's freaking awesome. What are you painting my roof for? I don't need a painted roof. What the fuck is... Well, I think it's smoking a lot of weed because I don't think you will wear on my roof. What the fuck have you done? This is, this is kind of bizarre. You just stop. Stop all work. I will be there. This is a mistake. I do not touch my bro. There's no such thing as a poodle fire. Ouch! It's my cat. Like, who, who wants to get a who wants a place that's currently on fire? You're crazy! You're telling me you came and laid down in our front yard and smoked marijuana? 
looking out the windows in this place. I've got a list of numbers here from Caitlin. It's for a silent auction. These are always fun. There are four different auction pages. This first one is for a wooden mirror. Wait, what? A wooden mirror? How does that work? And there's um, just three numbers on it. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of numbers on these lists, but I don't know. Could be fun. There's a few. Let's give these a try. Hi, Mrs. Zawapishi. What? Uh, this is Gary. I'm with the uh, the auction you bid on this wooden mirror. It, a like, wooden mirror? Yeah, it was a silent auction. You put your uh, name and phone number on it. It says P on here, so I don't know if it was maybe Where you, was or, this at? you or your husband. It was at the silent auction. It was a little piece of paper, and you signed up on it. But what silent auction? Where was it at? Like what location? Uh, we're the one. We had the wishing well and the mirror, and the uh, the. Oh, at the end of walk. Oh yeah, that one. Yep, that's the one. Okay. Yep. Um. Cause, cause, well, you d you didn't win it originally. Right. But uh, cause you got outbid on it, but none of those people, yep. none of them uh, wanted to pay for it, so it defaults to you. But then as we were crossing out. We were putting a check mark next to your name on the list. Um, it's you know, Martha Steuben, She's the one that does these things. Uh, she, her hand knocked over the mirror and it broke. Oh dear! So now you owe us seventy dollars for the broken mirror. Mm -hmm. right. So you're going to need to pay us for that, but we can't give you the mirror anymore because it's broken. Okay. Sound All good? Right. Too bad. What do you mean too bad? What do you mean too bad? Why would I have to pay for it? Because um, she was doing a check mark next to your name that says you're going to have to be the one to pay for it. And right as oh, she did. Excuse me, this is a scam. You know what? You need to get a real job. No, it's not a scam. I think I'm making my stories too crazy, too convoluted. I need to stick with the old, uh, you stole my pin thing. This next one also doesn't have a first name on it, but at least they have a last name I can pronounce. And now I know where the silent auction took place, at least. I'm probably going to have to bleep that out of there, but at least I know. Hello? Hello, Nancy? Yes. Hey, it's uh, Roy from the walk. Oh, hi, Roy. Hi. Uh, you you, uh, you bid on this wishing well? And then uh, yeah. it, it looks like Bob, uh, he outbid you on it. Okay. But then um, he he wouldn't pay. Anyway, what I'm getting at is uh, oh. when you put your name on here, uh, you stole uh -huh. you stole our pin. We need our pin back. I stole your pen. <laughs> yes, it's not funny. Like it's it's a. I, I know it's just a pin to you, but we, yeah, we've got. I don't a, think I stole your pen. We've got a budget here, and you're like just making us go over budget. So we have to buy more pins. All right. Can you please bring well, it back? Give me your address, and I'll drop off a box of pens for you. How's that? Oh no! Just bring back the pen that you stole. All right. Where would you like me to drop it off? Uh, same place you stole it from. We're still here. Okay. I'll bring it back there. Okay. Thank you. Same picnic table? Yep. Yep. <laughs> We're still there. Yep. Thank you so much. Oh. All right. All right. Bye, Nancy. Bye. Well, this sucks. This is going nowhere. I blame Caitlin for this. The other person on this wishing well list is not picking up. Next, we've got a cedar bench. Minimum bid, $75. First name is that lady I talked to before that just laughed about the whole thing. So I guess I'm not going to call her. Hello. Hello, Donna? Yes. Is this Donna? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Uh, this is Steve Dave. I'm with the uh, the silent auction from the In the, in the Silence Walk. Yep. Uh, you, you bid on this uh, the cedar bench. Yep. And you won. I did. Yeah. Um, I was there. Somebody else had gotten it. Yeah, but he's a deadbeat. He he wouldn't pay for it. That was Peter. Really? Yeah. Um, I just no need. Kidding. I needed to let you know there. They're gonna put a gold plaque on the back of this bench because the okay. the people that made it they're heavily involved with the Ku Klux Klan, and it's gonna say generously donated by the Ku Klux Klan. Is that a problem? No. 
<laughs> okay, so you're you're cool with the Ku Klux, Ku Klux Klan then? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> okay, because it's going to be in big bold letters on your bench, and it's an it, it, it's a unmovable plaque. It's going to be like mounted in there, like engraved. Why the Ku Klux Klan? Uh, because the the person that made the bench, he's like uh, the Grand Puba or whatever. You know, he's he's oh. one he's one of the leaders of the local chapter of the Ku Klux Ku Klux Klan. Oh, all right. Yep. I guess that'll have to be all right then. And then, so, uh, uh, when uh, do I get this bench? Uh, we're gonna bring it over now. Um, we're gonna go ahead and bolt it down in your front yard. Is that cool if we bolt it you're down? Gonna bolt, you're gonna bolt it down in my front yard. Yeah, we're gonna put concrete down. We're gonna lay down a slab of concrete and have some bolts and like bolt it down in the front yard facing the road. So everyone can okay. see that, um, you know, just see the nice bench and they can use it. It'll be right there by the edge and they can, you know, just sit on the bench and stuff. Well, do you even know where I live? Um, yeah, we looked it up. Oh, and who am I talking to again? Uh, my name's Steve Dave. I'm, I'm with the, uh, we, you know, we do the silent auction stuff. What's all that noise? What are you doing? Uh, my, my phone's almost dead. Oh, and it makes that noise when it's almost dead? Yeah. Weird. Yeah, the only problem is the only problem is I'm not at home. Oh, it's cool. We'll just show up and install it. We'll we'll have it facing the road and everyone can use it. Everyone will see the big gold plaque that says proudly supported by the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> okay. Yep, a, a subsidiary of Planned Parenthood. All right. That's what it's going to say. Okay, sounds good. Yep. Uh, make America Great Again, also, underneath that part. Oh, okay, sounds good. All right. So when you get home, it'll be there, and uh, we'll, we'll leave an envelope up on your porch for the, All right, thank for you. the $80 you All owe right. us. All right, thank you. Okay, that clicking's getting louder. You better go, because it's getting ready to die or okay. s- something. All right, bye-bye. All right, bye, honey. What the hell is with this list, Caitlin? Nobody gets upset about anything. I've got one last number to try. It's also for this bench. Most of the numbers have not picked up, so I'll have to go back and try these again sometime soon. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. And that guy's not picking up, so I guess I'm done with this list. For now, anyway, I got a lot of answering machines where I just kind of said pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up on their machine, but they never did pick up. But I'll try again. Thanks again, Caitlin. So let's see what else we've got here in the request folders. I've got something here from Fady. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Fady wants me to call her apartment building, or maybe it's her ex-apartment building. I'm not sure. Hi, Roy. Jennifer is the craziest resident manager you could possibly prank. I lived there a few years back. Okay, I guess it's the ex-apartment. And it was an insane experience. She'd sneak into apartments and steal stuff. I had to install a camera. She steals mail. I had to call the police to recover packages she stole. What the fuck? She can't do that. To get me back for calling the cops on her, she broke my lock and called the cops on me as I tried to fix it. Thankfully, the cops figured out how crazy she is. I'm far from her only victim. Her superiors don't give a fuck about her actions. Her husband and fellow resident manager is a royal pussy. Here's the address. Here's some apartment numbers. Apartments are mostly bachelors. Let's see if Jennifer picks up. Towers. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm a tenant here. Okay. Um, I was wondering if you could put out a notice to tell everyone to uh, just shut their toilets uh, real tight. I'm going to be trying something. No. I've... Why Who are you? Uh, I'm, I'm a, I don't have access to that. I know you're a tenant, but what you, apartment? You don't have access to what? To send out a, a memo or something? Like or? to send out an email. No, I'd or, have to put up notices. Who are you? Well, can, can you just send out an email or maybe give me everyone's phone Who, number? No, I don't have emails. I'm you, trying to explain this to you. Who are you? I don't have email. That's we, this, this is Roy. I'm a, Who? I'm a tenant. I'm in 303. Okay. Okay. I've got an industrial strength... Um, uh, you know, com- You're compressor. not in Unit 303. I, anyway, it doesn't matter. I've got a compressor in here. I'm going to blow a bunch of air through the toilet lines. Why? 
Uh, just why? I, I just want to try something, but it's probably going to make. Okay, I'm going to have the police on the way. Then I'm going to have the police on the way because no. you are not allowed to do that. No. Yep. Yep. No, no. Police are on their way then, and they're Look. going to, because that is vandalism to my building. You specifically said in your lease, you are not allowed to do any of that. Okay, listen. So if Gen- you do that, Jennifer, I will have Jennifer, the police on the way. Jennifer, you don't have to be a bitch about it. I, I'm just, I was just. And asking. you are not to do that. Why not? Like, what, what do you have against that? Because so- it's in your lease that you're not allowed to. Uh, no, it's that not. That is vandalism, There's... and if, yes, it is. It's not. It very specifically says you are not allowed to do anything with my plumbing. It's not. I'm going to hang up now, and I'm phoning the police. It's not going to hurt the pipes, you. You're not allowed. It's not, it's not you are hurt. not allowed to. Listen, stupid. It's not going to hurt the pipes. Listen, fuckwad. You want to call me names? I'll call you names. I don't care. Apparently, you do. You do it? All right, I have the police on the way. I said I wasn't going to do it since you told me I can't. Oh, my God. She called me a fuckwad. She can't call her tenants a fuckwad. Let me try her right back. The police are on their way. I'm on the other line no, with them. No, I like. I'm not going to do it. Like, don't worry about it. I just want to. Well, I don't care. I'm going to have the I, police come and speak to you to make sure you're not going to do I'm it. I'm not doing anything. I just want to know if I can borrow. A pl- I don't believe you, and I'm actually going to have an eviction drawn up. So can, you can, go right ahead can, and do what you're going to do. Can I borrow a plunger? That's all I'm calling about. Can I borrow a plunger? No, I don't have plungers. Okay, well that's all you have to say. Oh, there's the police on the other line. Got to go. Oh, you're full of shit. She didn't call no police. She doesn't even know what apartment I'm in. I said 303, and she didn't believe that. But, man, she she's a high-strung person. Thanks for that one, Fady. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call back one more time as a different tenant, as Carol. Even though Fady says this is a building full of mostly bachelors, but Carol will have to do. I'm calling from a different area code, but in the same area. Carol's. Hey there, uh, this is Carol, um, I'm on your roof right now, and... Mm, what roof? The roof here at the apartment buildings. I was putting up a, a satellite dish, and the door is kind of... Well, you got to give me more than just a roof. I have seven different properties. Okay, jeez, okay, sorry. So uh, I need more than just a roof. Okay. That's why I asked you, okay. what roof? Okay, don't yell at me, uh, it's... Okay, goodbye. Ma'am. Jesus, <laughs> this lady. Towers. Ma'am, I'm at Street. You can't be on the roof at Street. We don't allow satellite dishes. I know, but I was putting one up. I was hoping nobody would notice. But the the door is stuck, so I can't get back in. Who are you? My name's Carol. I'm I'm a tenant here. Wait, which apartment? In um, 732. We don't have a 732. Okay, I don't want to tell you because I don't want to get in trouble for the satellite thing. But can you just open the door for me? I'll be there in a minute. Okay, how long is it going to take you? Like, ah, shit. That is so weird that there's landlords that are that insane. I've always had really nice landlords for some reason. But, okay, maybe she's on her way up to the roof now. That's kind of funny. I kind of want to call her back in an hour and just be like, Hey, remember that time I made you go up on the roof? LOL. But, no, I won't do that. Let's just see what else I have here. I have a list from Greg. Greg has sent me a small list of people who he wants me to call. Some of them are his friends. One of them is his supervisor, or his former supervisor, who is a total crackhead to the point it messes up his judgment, picks fights with people, gets thrown out of bars regularly. Anything would be funny. So, I don't know. Could I ask him to buy some crack? Or Because I don't know where he's the former supervisor of. I'm just going to tell him I'm changed in his number. I'm not sure if that'll work with the crackhead or not. Hello? <coughs> hi, Brandon? Yeah, hi. Hey there, uh, this is Steve Dave from AT&T, you know, your wireless carrier. Yeah, what's uh, up? I'm calling to let you know we're going to be changing your number here in a few minutes. You're going to have a brand new phone number. Um, why? Uh, it's just uh, we, we made a small mistake. We gave your number to a different customer. So as soon as we get their account activated here, yours is going to stop working. But I'm, I'm going to have a brand new number here for you. I, it, wait, what, are you wait, hold on. That, that's... Uh, um, I'm sorry, that's not that's unacceptable. I yeah. Well, it won't cost you um, anything. It's free. Like we're not charging you. No, I'm, I I don't care that I. Why would you charge me? No, that's this is well, unacceptable. You, you, you usually about? usually it's eighty dollars to change your phone number. Who am but, I talking to right now? Uh, my name is Steve Dave. I'm with AT and T. I'm in customer service. Yeah, that's not true. Okay, bye. What do you mean that's not true? I'm so confused. What gave it away? How would a crackhead be able to figure me out? 
Hello? Hey, um, well, when your number stops working, uh, just call a friend and they'll be able to tell you what your new number is through your caller ID. What are you talking about right now? Are you serious? Yeah, I'm completely serious. I'm calling from customer service with AT&T. I'm, I'm just letting you know that we're changing your number. It's, it's, a, it's a mistake. I'm very sorry that it happened, but we have to change your number. Why were you trying to say that it usually costs $80? Because it does usually cost $80 if you want to change your number for no reason. Okay, well, I don't want to change my number. I want to keep my same number. So uh, yeah, what are we going to do about this? Unfortunately, that's not an option anymore. I've already given your number to a different customer. He asked for your, uh, for your number specifically because it spells out something for his business, I guess. So he's going to have your old number, this 3671 number. And you're going to have okay. An- well, I, I, what if I have a business and my number is already been, is already oh, no, that- out and available? So uh, my my number can't just change. I uh, got that's unacceptable. Well, it's not possible that you have a business on this number. Why is that not possible? Because you don't have a business line here. It's just a consumer <laughs> line. Okay, I'm saying, what if I use my phone number for business and I don't want my number to change because it's already on my business card? Well, you can't do okay, that. You'd, so have, you'd have to get a business account with us. That costs a little bit more. I, I can switch you over to the business department if you want to um, set up a business account with them. But you, someone's you'd, fucking with me. No, you're still going to have a different someone's number, though. Who is this? I'm sorry, what? Hello? Yes? Who is this? I, I've already told you a couple times now. My name is Steve Dave. I'm with AT&T Customer Service. I'm really sorry this is happening. It's just, you know, we're changing. I'm having a hard time believing this. This is kind of strange to me. Huh? I'm not sure why. I don't know. This guy's freaking me out. Okay, look. I, we I, we don't need to get into an argument. I can just give you your number and I can let you go. That, that's all I'm calling to do is give you your new phone number and apologize. All right. What's my new phone number? Uh, it's uh, area code 902. Why would my it, phone number be 902? That's not my phone number. Because we're, we're out of 301s. Uh, 902 is in Nova Scotia. <laughs> Stop right. fucking with me. Stop fucking with me. Who is this? Who is this? Sir, I, I'm, not, I'm not fucking with you. I'm with AT&T. <laughs> what? We're, we're not allowed to fuck with customers. <laughs> Who is? So you don't want your phone number then? You're just going to figure it out on your own? I guess so, yeah. Okay, because it's already changed. It's, it's, uh, it's been done. I put it through while we were talking. Someone else, Who is this? Someone else has your number now. Okay, all right. All right. Well, you have a nice day. Oh, he hung up before I could tell him I loved him. So I guess he's uh, mellowed out a little bit, Gregory, since back when he was your supervisor. I like that someone was coughing the whole time in the background. He's probably smoking crack. Maybe that's why he was in such a good mood, because he was in the middle of some crack smoking. So next we have Brianna. Brianna is a former college classmate, total bitch, tries to get others to do her work. Maybe do a hang up the phone or a stop winking your butthole or anything crazy. I don't know how I could do a stop winking your butthole because it's not like I know where she hangs out or where she works or anything that could make... I don't know. I'm just going to tell her to hang up the phone. Oh, and it's busy. It's What? It's busy? She has a landline or something? It says it's busy. Okay, I'll come back to that one. And we'll call Kun Wu, who is also a former class project member from college, who is very arrogant. Hello. Hey, Kung Wu? Yes, it's me. Hey there, um, could you hang up the damn phone? What's that? I, I said hang up that phone. You just hang it right up. Okay. You just hang it up. Well, crap. You didn't sound very arrogant. Are you sure you didn't get your crackheads and your arrogant people mixed up here? Maybe. Hello? Hey, um, I'm an, I want you to hang up the phone again, but next time when I call, you better not answer. You better not answer that All phone. Right. Huh. God damn it. All right. Kung Wu is the winner. And Brianna is still busy. Next, he's sending me the numbers of two really good friends. So try to do a different prank to them with a different number and or voice. 
if you decide to prank them, that is. This way my cover won't be blown. They know very well I do prank calls, but I have not spoken to any of them for over two years. Not sure if these numbers still work. How are they really good friends if you haven't talked to them in two years? And also you're calling this first one a huge cunt who is gullible. Hello? Hello, Neil? Yes? Hey there. Uh, this is Steve Dave from AT&T Customer Service. I'm calling to let you know we're getting ready to change your number. This uh, 01 number, we're changing it to a different number. Um, I'm sorry, wait, I don't have AT&T. Yeah, but um, you originally had AT&T for your line, so even when you switch to a new carrier, we still own the line, and we've decided to give your number to a different person, to a new customer. So uh, you're not... Oh, I mean, I've, I've never... You don't? Um, I've never heard of that before. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's because the line's originally with us. So we're changing your number, and I've got your new number here if you want that. You're not going to be able to use the 01 number anymore. It's going to belong to a business from now on. I'm sorry, which AT&T are you calling from? Uh, AT&T Wireless. From what's your location? Um, well, me personally, I, I'm, I'm in Florida. I'm in the call center in Florida. Oh, okay. Um, okay, well, can I speak to a manager? Uh, I guess so, but I mean, it's it's a done deal. There's not much that uh, my supervisor can do for you, but I, I can put her on. No, I understand that, but it's really random for you to call me randomly to tell me that you're oh, it's, switching my number. It's it's not random. It's it's just uh, they they wanted your number because no, it, it spells, is random. It is random because you randomly called me and you're telling me that you're going to be changing my number. Well, it's just that they wanted your number because it spells something like the last uh, however many digits spells something related to their business. I'm, but, I'm, I I'm. still like to speak to a manager. Since you're not with this us makes anymore. absolutely no sense. Okay, well, I, I can put you on hold and I'll I've get... had this number for over seven years, and you choose to do that now? Yeah, well, it's not like you're a business That's or anything. That's why. But, it, it, you know, you're not with us anymore, so it's, um, you know, we're, we're allowed to change your number now. Because we, we own the I'm number. Sorry, is, is, this, is, is, is this a prank call? <laughs> of, no, of course not. I, I can get my supervisor if you want, though. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, just a minute. I'll get her on the line. Please hold. This is Carol. I'm the supervisor. Can I help you? Damn it. Greg says I'm not allowed to do the same prank to the next person who is a total spaz and blows everything out of proportion. Easily agitated when you push her buttons. Make some sexist comments and you'll get her pissed. She's most likely to stay on the phone for a long time if she's triggered and if you do not give her a chance to hang up. She's got to get the last word. So I can't do hang up the phone on her and I can't tell her I'm changing her phone number. You have reached the voicemail box. Of and she is just hitting the fuck you button. She won't pick up the phone. You have reached. Yep, I cannot get her to pick up. Let's try one more time on this Brianna person. And it's still busy. Damn it, Brianna. So this list is over now. Thank you, Greg, for sending it in. At least that first guy was amusing, Brandon. Here, let me call Brandon right back. Hello? Hello, Brandon? Yeah, hello? Hey there, this is uh, Carol from the mayor's office here in... I, it's somebody with, like, a, a voice changer. It's the what? same person. Hello? What? What? A, a voice changer? That's crazy talk. No, I'm calling from the mayor's office. This is the same person that called me before. No, I, I, How are you getting these phone numbers, bro? What, what are you talking about? I'm calling from the mayor's office. Uh, the mayor wanted me to give you a message. Then curse. What are you talking about? Uh, all right, what's the message from the mayor? Uh, the mayor does not like you. <laughs> I feel like my phone's getting hacked right now. Oh, no, no. D d don't worry about that one bit. Staying on your line will not increase the hack that I'm doing on it. All right. I guess we're done with this list for now. Thanks again, Greg. I will try these two that didn't pick up at a later time, if that's okay with you. I mean, not that it matters. Not like you're really good friends with these people. You haven't talked to them in two years. 
And holy shit, I think he's the second person ever to point out that I was using a voice changer. Or I don't know, that girl before she hung up as soon as Carol came on the line. Maybe she realized it too. She just didn't say anything. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. We're sorry, the number you have dialed has calling restrictions that have prevented the completion of your call. Announcement 19. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. We're sorry, the number you have dialed has calling restrictions that have prevented the completion of your call. Uh -oh. Announcement 19. That's not a good sign. I wonder if I just change my number. Will that make it go through? Did I pick a number that's been flagged already? Welcome to Verizon Wireless. We're sorry. Nope, that's a different number. Here, I'm gonna try and call this number. By the way, this is a submission. I didn't read what it is yet, but I'm gonna call it from my regular cell phone just to see if it picks up. Hi, this is Scott. Please leave a message and I'll give you a call. Oh shit, what is this sorcery? I'm totally screwed. Here, let me try and call from a different carrier. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. Nope. That's a completely different carrier than I'm calling from now. Like before I was calling from uh, flowroute.com, and right there I was calling from voip.ms, and neither one of them will go through. So I guess I'll skip that prank for now. That was some lady who applied for a job at Domino's, and they left her application sitting on the counter. But then why was the voicemail for Scott? I'm so confused. But, you know, they're working on trying to stop the robocalls, so maybe we're going to start hearing a lot more of that in the future, of my calls just not working at all. I may have to uh, get some different phone lines in here to make the calls go. Mrs. Cotton wants me to call a shitty anime store. The owner's name is Steven, and he's a nightmare. I have attached a photo of him. He loves responding to bad reviews on Google. He likes accusing unhappy customers of lying or being disgruntled former employees. Okay. This one's from a year ago. How may we help you? Hello, is uh, Steven there? Uh, yes. One moment. Okay. For you. Hello? Hey, Steven. Uh, th this is uh, Gary from next door. From next door? Yeah, from the, the Indian cafe. Okay. Hey, I was wondering if, um, like, maybe when you walk by, you could stop looking at me all the time like that? Look at you. I, I don't walk by you at your booth. D yeah, you do sometimes, though. Like, you don't have to look no, at me. No, I never. You don't, you don't have to look at me like that. Like, I, I didn't do anything to you. What are you talking about? D just stop looking at me all the time. Stop looking at me when you walk by. I don't walk over there. Yes, you do, motherfucker. Well, I don't just just stop it that's all i ask just stop okay please are you the guy who runs the indian restaurant yeah yeah that's the one like right over here and you're always walking by and just looking at me just... okay dude i think you got the wrong person no i know i it's... never walked by there yes you do I don't, over there. I don't do anything over there yeah but every once in a while you do whenever you do you're always looking at me just stop. i don't yes you do over there at all. Stop, stop denying it. I drive. So, so yeah, just like, could you just apologize at least? No, nope, I didn't do anything. Well, you're always looking at me. All right, that sucked because I was quickly looking it up on Google Maps as I was calling it. And the first thing I saw was this Indian restaurant. And that's actually in the shopping center across from them. It's not even right next door. There's a beauty shop supply next to him. So stupid me. I messed that one up. Sorry, Mrs. Cotton. First I kill you and now this. Here's a request from Probix. Back in July of 2018, he's a first time requester. He says, I want you to call up my teachers I had in high school. These are probably landline numbers. I'm not sure to be honest. And he has a list here of a few of his old teachers. That sounds like fun. He says, I don't want you to mention much about the school that they work at because I don't want them to suspect one of the students or that it would come back to me. So just annoy them with your usual wacky ideas. Keep up the great work, Cactus Cactus. The first one on here is D. She's the music teacher and she's overweight. Okay. Aw. You have reached a number that has been disconnected. Damn it, Probix. What a crappy list. No, sorry. That's just the first one. It's okay. I'm going to try the next one. It's uh, Karen, who is the principal, who is also overweight. Probix is really focused on their weight. And her phone just rings. I'm going to edit it all out, but her phone rang a lot. Next, we've got Tanika. She is a teacher's aide. 
She was pretty cool, but I'm sure you can make her mad. Hello? And can I get the name on your order, please? My name is Tanika. All right. And just those three pepperoni pizzas then? Yep, that's all. I have your address on file as 20 Road. Correct, yep. Okay, I can have those there in about, uh, it's going to be about 30 minutes tonight. Would you like any, uh... Hello? Anything to drink? Hello? Hello? Hi! Oh, oh hello? Who, I'm sorry, what's this? Who's this? Hi, this is the real Tonica I would like to know who's saying yes, she's Tonica Yes, she ordered pizza with my address because there's no way anybody would deliver where I live. Ma'am. And I did not order pizzas. But, sir, that, that, that lady there, she's a, she's a liar. She's trying to steal my identity. <laughs> I, oh, I, don't know what I she, stole your identity. I don't know okay, what what's your birthday? L listen, you two. I don't know what's going on. I'm just I'm I'm here at Domino's. I'm just trying to fulfill a pizza order. Okay, what's you called my house. No, I I the didn't call. The phone rang into my house. My name is Tonica, no, and that is my address. I didn't call anyone. I, I'm just I'm just I answered the okay, phone to I'm place just this saying, order. My phone. My the, phone just rang. I will call the cops and report whoever is on your other line. I would like to know who that person is because she's impersonating the, well, me. I, I think she's the real Tonica because <laughs> she's just ordering a pizza. That's all. I, I don't know who you are. You just came on the line. I'm Tonica. No, I'm Tonica. You, you need to you stop are. lying where to do Domino's. You, where do you live? I, I live on Road. Road where? Well, hey, don't worry about it. Get off our line. I'm just trying to order my pizza, lady. No, I, I live on road. You get off the phone, lady. Where are you calling from? I'm, I'm calling from my house. You, you need, You're calling you to, from your, it's a 747 number. What's your phone number? Uh, d d well, don't worry about it. it like, sir, who, who is this asking what, what all my information is? Is this an employee there? No, I don't know who this is. She, she just came on the line and started yelling at us. Don't, what do I, I do? It's a Look, I'm, phone number. They hello? Here. Hello? Who, who's this? Is it, there's somebody Who else? Is this? On, well, th th this is Todd. I work at the Domino's. Yeah. I'm, I'm just okay. I'm placing an order for Tonica. You guys need to get off our line. No. My phone rang, okay? Well, and that, if you're from Domino's, I guarantee you, you do not want the cops involved, okay? That, that's this, what... This, no, this phone rang, okay? Well, that's, now, that's if somebody what the is impersonating said. my name and my number, there's only one Tonica in the phone book well, look it up do your research so when i get the cops involved in this then you can call me back and apologize you want me to do research just to place a pizza order i'm just fulfilling a pizza order here uh, okay that's fine but why are you dialing my number sir you, you need to get off our line i'm just trying to order a pizza for me and my husband okay, if you're ordering a pizza and tonica name then well, you're impersonating somebody else and you're breaking the law listen sir there's I'm... only one in I'm okay. Tonica. I'm Tonica. You, you, you are not Tonica. You don't even sound like a Tonica. <laughs> you're right. I'm her husband. Where is your husband to prove that you're Tonica? So when I call Domino's and then I get your name, then I'll report you shit. to the cops too. It doesn't I don't, matter. I don't have to prove anything. Like, you're right. You don't because I'll figure it out for myself. You so once you use your credit card and then my bank calls me back, if it's in my name, guess what? Guess what who's going to jail for fraud? I'm, I'm paying not me. I'm paying cash. I don't use that, a credit okay, card for funny, pizza. But don't use somebody else's name. And you know what? You can tell that fake Tonica in the background to shut the fuck up. Tell, tell her to just shut the fuck up. Nope, he's not going to do it. He's afraid to tell her to shut the fuck up. He just hung up the phone on me. Well, that worked out pretty well. I've been wanting to revisit that idea. Let's try Michelle. She's a special education teacher. Let's try Tiffany. She's a special education teacher. She's pretty cool. She never really yelled at students. Why are you making me prank her then? The number you have reached ah. has been disconnected. Tiffany's number has been disconnected. The last one on the list is Jamie. She's the computer business teacher. She was kind of mean sometimes. Hello. And I'm I'm sorry, Mrs. We're having problems finding your dry cleaning here. And um, like you, you say, you brought it on on Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. My name is Jamie. Yeah, we can't seem to find... You don't have your ticket anymore? What's your address? I can look you up here in the computer. Uh, I'm at 53 Old Road. All right, let me type that in here. I'm not seeing it. 
I'm very confused. Oh no, she hung up. Let me try her right back. And if if you lost my dry cleaning, I'm going to be very upset. No, I, I don't think we lost it. Just if you can find that ticket, because you should be in the computer, but I don't see you here in the computer. Well, I, I dropped it off on Thursday. Jamie, you need to find that right away. All right, I'm 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 looking again. Checking in the, in the old computer here. Yeah, it's it's saying here that it's um blah, okay. Jamie just doesn't give a shit, but she's probably weirded the fuck out now. You know, I, I really need to stop doing pranks. I think this show's gonna run kind of long today, but I kind of think the next show should be nothing but that. Just people picking up in mid conversation, and it's a conversation about themselves somehow. And we need to think of some better ideas. I mean, the pizza works pretty good. I remember the last time I did this. I was pretending to be their cell phone carriers, and they were changing their phone numbers. I think that one worked out pretty well. But what are some other scenarios that I could be doing besides ordering a pizza or changing a phone number or trying to find my dry cleaning, which didn't really work out too great? Here, I'm going to call Tanika back real quick. Just let her know it was a prank. Hello? Hello? Oh, hey, Tanika. This is Gary over at the Domino's. Yes. Hey, I was just kidding with you. It's just a slow night. We were just bored. We were just joshing. Well, that's not very cool at all. I know, I know. I, sh I shouldn't joke around. I brought a voice changer with me to work. See, I can make my voice go all crazy like this. Isn't it awesome? I can sound like a female. So what, what store do you work at? At the Domino's. But yeah, what Domino's? Uh, the, the Domino's here in town. What town? What do you mean, what town? Our town. How uh, did you get my phone number? Uh, you're in our computer, but I work over here on <laughs> Street in the Domino's. And, uh, you I, do not work on <laughs> Street because I've called <laughs> Street and nobody had an order for my name over there. I know, there was no order, but you're in the computer because you've ordered from us before. So I, I was, we were just making prank calls. My manager told me I had to call and apologize. So I'm really sorry. So you, so what's your work phone number? Um, the f number. What is it? I know. F I mean, I know that's f area code. Okay. What so is your work phone down. number? Settle down. You don't have to yell at me. It's. F but if you already know it, why are you asking me? Well, I don't know which store you work at. I mean, I told I've you on f street. Okay, this is not funny at all. I, it was funny at the time. It's just, I'm well, sorry. Well, no, it's We're, not, because you I, called my house from a 747 phone number. I know. I'm, it's I'm, not even showing up on my phone as a phone number. It's showing up as a phone number. Yeah, we, we used... Um, we used and whenever our, somebody is on the other end of the line saying my name and my address, that is not funny at all. I, I want to speak to your manager right now. I realize now it wasn't wasn't a I funny joke. I want to speak to your manager. Okay, well I won't do it again. I'm really sorry. No, I do it. You bet. Shut up. You better oh. not. Okay. I want to talk to your manager. All right. Let me just a minute. Okay, can you hold on one second? I have to get her. She's in the office. Oh, she hung up. I really wanted to put Carol on the phone because she totally wouldn't believe it because I just talked to her in that voice. And now it's busy, so I can't even call her back. Oh well, thank you Probix for this list. I've still got a couple on here that wouldn't answer, so maybe I'll try these again in another year or two. By then their numbers will probably have been disconnected, but at least Tanika was fun, right? Hello Brad, it's Apollo. Haven't Hello. called in in a while. Um, I need to change your name on Google Voice. a little bit of interesting information for you. Oh shit. You were doing those calls where it's gaseous water coming out of the pipes. Mm. And you had the guy that was all concerned that the only way you can do that is with heat. There's actually another way you can turn water into a gas, and holy it's a crap. lot more feasible. Uh, they do it in some humidifiers. What they do is they have the water goes over a little membrane, like a speaker, and if that's vibrating at a supersonic or like hypersonic frequency, mm -hmm. it'll break it up into really tiny little water droplets, so it's essentially a gas. Okay. So, I believe like you. like cool mist, whatever it's called, you can look that up and... Use those as some BS terms, and people might actually believe it. Yeah, maybe. For why their water is going to be missed or I something. Look that up or so I can yell at people and call them idiots.
even though I don't really understand anything myself. The calls are pretty entertaining, but I feel like there's there's more you can get out of it. These people have been boring. So hopefully you have some better luck with these next ones. Yeah. Bye, Brad. Have a good week. Bye. Hey, Brad. It's Olga. Hey, Olga. And I have a joke for you. Okay. Here's the joke. All right. Where do phones like to travel? I don't know. Where do phones like to travel? To the Great Call of China. <laughs> Shut up, Richard. Anyway, I just thought I'd call it. I haven't loved a voicemail in a while. No one Tell your Richard in the background to shut the fuck up. My beautiful voice in months and months. Yeah. So I thought I would let your beautiful listeners listen to my beautiful voice. Okay, yeah, that's quit, it. Quit sucking up. Bye. Bye, Olga. Nice of you to finally call in again. Hey, Brad. It's uh, Ryan Pony from New York. Hello. Uh, just to let you know, I was listening to your last podcast, and uh, if you give out somebody's social security number and somebody else has used it, you could be responsible, and that could violate your parole. I just want to give you a heads up there, ah, man. Shit. Uh, so you might want to be careful. But, but it's rappy. It's okay because it's rappy. He did a song about it. Giving out personal information. It's not yeah. the fact that you gave it out. It's the fact that somebody uses it for yeah. a certain reason. Then, then but you it's can, okay. He has bad credit. What are they going to do with it? Uh, responsible. Uh, just, just give you a heads up, man. All right, love the show. Love you, bro. Other than Have steal his identity. Yeah, I should probably cut that out, shouldn't I? Hey, Brad. It's been hey, fun. Hey, Rabbit. Hey, Rabbit. I just uh, listened to uh, 584 of the Snowplow Show. I actually listened to that on my way down to Fort Clinton. I had to meet up with the creator of Strawberry Shortcake. Of course. But I thought the ice cream truck idea was absolutely hilarious. All these just pissed up old people. Yeah. Had me cracking up the whole way. Yeah. And, um, I just oh, need to do it in a neighborhood where they actually have ice cream trucks. Or at least in a neighborhood that's publicly accessible and ice cream trucks could actually go to. Question. Uh, what's the email that I uh, can get you to uh, request? Because I have a pretty good idea, but I don't want to tell it on the voicemail. That's just a waste of resources. Yeah, that's okay. dumb. Cactus. Anyone Goodbye. that does that is dumb. There's a form on Snowplow Show. It's uh, snowplowshow.com slash request. That's the best place to send in numbers or anything else you might have. But if you just want to send an email, it's show at snowplowshow.com. Hey, Brad. It's Mr. Taco from Texas. Hey. I'm lonely as fuck, as usual. I'm but sorry. Anyways, um, when you do um, homeowners association calls, you should say uh, you're changing their address to like a different one from across the street. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. All right. To, use, to use up the city budget. You know, we just need something to do here in the office. Bye. So we're going to swap some house numbers around. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, Brad. Frito Bandito here. Hey. Just wanted to say, hope you enjoyed your vacation. Yeah, it's all right. I'm one of the only ones that's not upset about you taking some time off and not producing any shows. Uh, I just want to do a call and say that I listened to the recent Snowplow show for Friday, and I laughed my ass off when you would give people rappies. So security number and the old people just don't know what to say and then they automatically assume it's a scam call. Yeah. I fucking fell out. It's it hilarious. Was great. Keep up the great work. Until I like, get arrested or whatever for someone stealing his identity. Bad. Take a vacation whenever you want. Well, not whenever, but yeah, thanks. We all get for the there. permission. If you had a normal job, you take one, right? Well, Anyway, keep up the great work, Brad. I will. I've been doing the, you know, at least two weeks every year, right around the same time, usually in the middle of summer. But thanks to the dumb hobo con, I've done more like September. That's not happening next year. I'm going in the middle of summer. Hey, Brad, it's Weaponized Cactus, a.k.a. Macro Corgi. Hey. Uh, am I an idiot slash yes. hobo? Uh, I didn't know you had a book. Why do you never talk about that? I saw it on Amazon. Uh, is it any good? Thanks. The book is such old news at this point. I think that came out in 2011, and if anyone wants to get it, it's on Amazon. Search for Phone Losers of America on Amazon. Hopefully that's the only thing that'll come up. Here, let's check. Oh, there's also a Phone Losers of America pop socket, which I gave someone permission to sell. But you know what I haven't done in a while? I haven't gone to the reviews of the PLA book to see what people are saying about it. I know originally I told everyone to leave terrible reviews, and it looks like because of that I've got 10% terrible reviews. At least I have a good excuse for my terrible reviews, because I told people to do it. But on September 9th, 2019, someone named Arvada Dude says, This book made my month. I found it on accident here on Amazon somehow. I like reading hacker bios, and this popped up as a recommended read. The book is sort of a biography of a phone freak and his exploits. He uses technical skills. Well, this one isn't funny, but thanks for the five-star review. Here's a one-star review from June 7th, 2019. 
from K McHenry. He says, too much harassment, not like the phone freaks. This has a mean side to it. See, now that's funny. That's a good one. Thank you, K McHenry. Jared A says, the house is not a pool. That's all he says. Kyle S says, thanks to this book, I've racked up thousands of dollars of charges on my neighbor's phone lines. I've been arrested for toll fraud twice and bought a large talking cactus. Thanks, phone losers. That's a five-star review. Paulster says, I'm not the one who likes reading books, but this particular book was great. I've been a fan for PLA for over 10 years and decided on purchasing this book. I was able to finish it within a week. That's because my writing skills are right around, you know, fifth grade level. That's the only reason. Don't be too proud of yourself. And I think I read this one by King Richard. It's from 2017. He says, hey, kids, drop out of school. Read this book. At the very least, don't bother completing high school. This book will teach you everything you need to know to be a fully self-sufficient adult. Want to protect your home from space-based microwave beams? Charge the mileage from seven hours worth of driving to your boss? Learn how to sell mirrors for the price of an iPad? Mr. Carter teaches his readers all of that and so much more. I can't believe I wasted years of my life getting a public education. Only after I finished studying the wisdom of Brad Carter have I truly become a functioning member of society. Unlock your true potential and buy this book. Thanks, King Richard. Juggalo Tribe for Life. So, yeah, there's a PLA book, everyone. You can find it at phonelosers.com slash book or search Amazon for it. It's only $3 on your Kindle. And for some reason, it's still $15 as a paper book. I should probably lower that since it's been like, you know, 10 years now. Hey, Brad. Uh, I'm a hey. fairly new listener. Uh, my name is Papa Steph. And I think your show is really great. I've been watching or I've been well, listening to you. your show kind of going in backwards order. And... Uh, I'm on episode 460. They only get better as you go backwards. It just gets better and better and better until it ends. Today, and I just wanted to let you know I think it's really funny when you play the like pathetic applause sound. You were doing the dozen mixed winners call, uh, and when you played that, yeah. it was just like a couple claps. It was pretty funny. Uh, I'm not going to give you any ideas on over Thank the you. voicemail of how to do your job better because... You're the best damn one in the business. Oh, so like, keep doing what you're doing. It's really funny. I appreciate what you do. I think he said he's on 463, so he's got a ways to go before he finishes up. Look at this. I only have voicemails from September left. Nothing in August, nothing in October, just September. I should just finish these up. Hey, RB, it's Deadly Flyers from Nashville. Hey. Uh, I was just calling to see if you'd heard about the movie The Devil and Daniel Johnson. Of course I have. You've been on a Devil, uh, Daniel Johnson kick. Lately, and I've actually watched it three times since I've discovered Daniel Johnston twice by myself and then once with somebody else. So, yep, I've seen it. It It goes into his history and his life. Uh, It's pretty interesting. Anyway, talk to you later. Yeah, thanks. Maybe now that he's dead, he'll get an even better documentary. Hey, Roy. It's Bandit the Male Stripper. Hey, It's been like a year since I called, I think. You may not even remember who this is. No. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to call and tell you real quick that I graduated. Um, I finished my bachelor's degree in medical laboratory science. So, so now uh, you have you have you have an, uh, a hematologist on the oh the shit. PLA team. You're, you're, you're like a genius, aren't you? So the next time you call some lady and her her I- IQ comes into question, she goes, oh, oh, "Oh, if only you knew how smart I was. <laughs> I was an expert in hematology." You wouldn't believe say, it. Oh yeah, well. We've got a PLA member, and he's got a degree in hematology, yep. and and he couldn't be that smart because he's a fan of this show. Thank you. Wow. Do the drum thing. Wow. The drum. Do the drum. Oh, yeah. I have to do yeah, the drum. There you go. Okay. All right. Uh, that's it. I hope I got it within 30 seconds. Thanks. No, it was a minute. Exactly 58 seconds. Why does everyone think they do 30 seconds when it's actually twice that long? It's okay, though. I'm not complaining. Hi, Brad. It's... Hello, Winker34. Hello. From Omaha. Howdy. And listen to the Snowplow show today. I love the, I love that whole cameo idea where you, you get a celebrity to go on there and uh, uh, leave a me too uh, personalized message. Uh, yeah. And I was just thinking, you know, you should you should really uh, sign up for that deal so people could uh, pay you some money and uh, uh, leave personalized messages for them. I would pay upwards of eleven dollars and eleven cents. Uh, yeah, you do that uh, yeah, for a I message. Could. Anyway, bye. Bye.
Yeah, maybe I'll do that someday. Cameo keeps sending me emails now that I've ordered things from them. And today I got an email, and I might have the numbers wrong on this, but I think they had a John Hedder who played Napoleon Dynamite. You can get him to say something for you for $100, and then right below that in the email, it showed that they have Macy Gray, and she's only worth 50 bucks. So I kind of felt bad for Macy Gray. She's not even Napoleon Dynamite level of popular anymore. Poor Macy. All right, last voicemail is two minutes long. What the hell, Corbin guy? What are you uh, doing? Oh, hey there, Brad. Hey, it's Corbin guy. Hey. Yay. Yeah, okay. Southern Oregon That's area right. as your phone mail requested. Hey, um, guess what? We're off to a great Speaking start. About, guess, guess where? <laughs> <laughs> You sound like that guy that's on crack that I talked to earlier. Both him and all his friends were coughing a whole bunch. <laughs> really, really Corbin guy. All right, thanks for the voicemail. It's been 30 seconds. I'm sure it was a great one. That's going to do it for today's show. Thank you, Crooked Alligator and Todd L., Anagol009, Xander Fett, and The Least Creative for being the sponsors of today's show. If you'd like to be a sponsor, please do that by going to patreon.com slash phonelosers or phonelosers.com slash support. You know, I should just say new project to slash phonelosers. Fuck the PLA website. What a piece of garbage. Stuff is always breaking on there. I should just use the external sites for my show. You people that use the PLA website, I don't know how you put up with it. I highly recommend just going to Patreon or New Project 2. Anyway, thank you for supporting the show. Everybody, thanks for being patient with me this past month. Holy shit, four days left until the Breaking Bad movie comes out. Can you believe that? I sure can't. I think I'm going to go to the theater and watch it. I don't know why I'm bringing that up right now. I'm going to play a song by Brendan. It's called Listen Here, Buster. And I think it's a song all about Buster Casey and how awesome he is. Thanks for this one, Brendan. Listen here, Buster. Fuck you. What? What? Where are you? That's calling me. This is the most bizarre phone call I've ever heard. 